Roberts, we grow through practicing spiritual disciplines to deepen our relationship with God. At Roberts, we're transformed through worship, study, and fellowship. The Holy Spirit works within the community, provoking a transformation of lives. At Roberts, our witness is our lives, telling the world about the love of Christ through our service, deeds, and love. Sister Leo Battle had, sur had successful surgery and she's home now. Also, that Dan and Carolyn McCray and Ann Washington are also home. On another note, Sister Maddie Mays fell, was hospitalized, but is being transferred to rehab. Tomorrow is the celebration of the 4th of July holiday. Please. Be safe. We continue to pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. And I'm asking for each committee chairperson to provide a paragraph and a photo as we build our new website. I need that within two weeks, please. All those persons who are celebrating July birthdays, we wish you a very merry and happy birthday. Uh, we will have our regular meetings this week. Uh, for those of you on the golf committee, just a heads up, next Monday, we will have a golf meeting at 7 p.m. And these are the announcements for today. Thank you. Good morning. With friends and strangers, with family and neighbors be gathered. Come among us, healing God, with that love which never ends. With faith reaching out to touch, with hearts straining to trust, we hope. Come among us, friend of the broken, with your compassion which makes us whole. With word and wonder, with silence and song, we wait. Come among us, dryer of our tears, to lift us to our feet to follow you. Join me now in our invocation, which is printed on your screen. It is an invocation for healing. We will read it responsibly. From fears that paralyze us, heal us, O Lord. From illnesses that strangles us, heal us, O Lord. From sorrows that weigh us down, heal us, O Lord. From aimlessness that plagues our visions, heal us, O Lord. Oh, it is Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment. 
and his blood has made me whole. Please join me in our morning hymn, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Epistle reading, which is 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. Our gospel reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. We'll begin reading at verse 35. If you have your Bibles, please read along with me. The words will also appear on your screen. 
While he was still speaking, some of the people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not be afraid, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a, com a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. They put him, then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in with the child. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I need you. You need me. We're we'll all, all a part of God's, God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're we'll we'll all, all a part of God's, God's body. body. It is His will that every need like you are important to me I need you to survive you are important to me I need you to survive I pray for you. 
That's all right, choir. Thank you so much. As we continue in our series on When the Spirit Moves, we conclude that series tomorrow, today, I'm sorry, and each week we've been asking members to do a reflection on the theme for the week. Our theme today is giving what you have. And we've asked Sister Norma Turner if she would be so kind as to give us a reflection. Sister Norma? Giving all that I have. Mm -hmm. My prayers are about what I can give to my church. I joined that church at 14 years old. And at 14 years old, I had very little to give. But I started out about that high from the ground. And I had to do recitations and other speeches. Mm -hmm. I sang in the choir for 31 years. I have given my resources, my prayers, of course, and everything that I can to Robert's Memorial. I have tried to pray for everyone who's out there. That's impossible, but sometimes it's not. I had nothing else to do when I got sick a few weeks ago. So I thought I would find a job to do in my church. I tried to put together all of the greeting cards that I have accumulated. And I said, you know, with before we lost Mrs. Conti and Sam Shanklin, we had greeting cards going out for every occasion to the membership of the church. The young people in the church responded to my sending out birthday cards. Several of them called me. I really think that my starting that may have stirred up some of the young people. And I used to ask my grandmother, Mama, do you have your envelope for church? She says, yes. Why are you concerned about that? You don't work. You have to have some money to put in the Sunday school. I do the best I can with my ice cream money. And further, Jesse gives me my ice cream money. That's my grandfather. So why are you concerned about that? You don't work. I know it. I know I don't work. But I'm concerned about you if you have enough to buy the food from the man who sells it and also funds to put in your envelope. Well, don't worry about me, and don't worry about my envelope. I will be provided from the God that takes care of you and me. I think he's satisfied, but I feel that when you do well for him, you are blessed. And I know I've been blessed, given all that I have. Do you have your envelope full this morning? Thank you so much for that reflection, Tom.
people just like you and me who are willing to do what he commands. God uses people that will give him all. this day, at this moment, I ask you to search your hearts and think about those things that you would like to take to God in prayer. And I'm going to pause and allow you to lift your Ebenezer's before the Lord. Pray, church. And as we go. 
go together in prayer on this day. We're praying for the continued recovery for Mr. Leola Battle, for Dan and Carol McCray, for Ann Washington, for Sister Maddie Mays, for Sister Shirley Jones. And yes, I'm praying for you also. For all of those who are mourning, I think of Brother Penny, Val and Rini, Sister Betty, Sister Ella, the grandkids who are mourning the loss of Sister Jenny Gray. I also want to lift up Brother Tyrone Foreman and his family as they continue to walk with him through this recovery. For his partner, Sister Gina, I'm praying for you. For the caregivers, yes, I thank you, Sister Melody. The niece of Brother Dan McCray, who has been here and assisting him and keeping us informed of what's going on. Yes, you are in our prayers as well. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day and for this blessing. The blessing we have is that you've allowed us come together via Zoom and Facebook and YouTube to worship you, O oh God. And in our individual homes, and some of us are at work, some may even be in care facilities. For those who are worshiping in us, with us from around the nation, we thank you and we bless you because God is in the blessing business. So, Lord God, we know that you have blessed us and you have brought us to this point in time. And, Lord, all we can say is thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're doing. And, Lord, my heart is, goes out to my last remaining aunt, sister, Leora Walla, and her family. As she struggles, as she fights, Lord, to stay alive. And God, you know how much she means to all of us. No more than others who have loved ones who are sick and others who have loved ones who have gone away. We imagine the vacuum, Lord, and we know that only you can fill it. We know the hurt that we will feel, Lord, but we know that only you can heal it. And so, God, the careers I've been lifted up, the concern, the concerns that others have lifted up, we give them all to you, Lord, for your safekeeping. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have hope in you because of the work of salvation that Jesus has performed. And we give it unto you, Lord, not taking it back, trusting you, Lord, that your will will be done. Nothing more Nothing less, nothing else. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our music of meditation is Shine On Me. Let the light from the lighthouse shine on me.
Our text for today <clears throat> comes from 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. And it was read to you earlier, <clears throat> but I want to lift up this pericope. Beginning at the earth at the eighth verse, Paul says, I do not say this as a command, but I'm testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Amen. And our sermon title today is Giving What You Have. The context is that Paul is collecting money for the church. Yes, I'm going to be talking about money today. Some of you get upset whenever I do that, but get over it. And I like the fact that he states quite openly. It's a generous act to give. And he posits that in the context of what you have, not what you don't have. Not in competition with anyone else. Not even that you might receive a thank you note. But that your generosity matches your eagerness to give based on what Christ has done for you. How can I restate that? When we think about the fact that all the riches in glory were Christ, and he left that place to come to earth to walk among us, he gave what he had. He gave his all that we might be wealthy because of that. What kind of wealth are you talking about, preacher? In this context, he was talking about the wealth of a new life, a renewed life, a life of giving and serving and loving that others might understand that we serve a God who loves us so much that God emptied God's self and became a human being that we might see the perfect example of love and generosity and kindness and goodness. Are you with me this morning? And I thought it was, it was, it was quite pointed that the text says that which you began a year ago to complete it. Now, it's ironic that he mentions a year ago. Now think about us, Roberts, what we have been enduring since a year ago. Uh, we have not been gathering together. We have not been fellowshipping together. We've been viewing all of our worship services electronically, most of them recorded in advance, as is today's worship. And so, as your pastor, I don't command it, 
what I recommend. That that which you began last year, that you complete it. Now, some of you pledged that you would give X number of dollars to Roberts. Have you completed that? Has the generosity of your spirit just dried up? Why am I asking that? Because I say it with a sad heart, a sad heart, that some of the people who call Robert's home, some of the people who've been worshiping with this congregation for years, for years, have not seen fit to help the church in its financial need. Amen, lights. Yeah, you heard me right. I said some of the people who would sit in these pews and praise the choir and say amen to the preaching, who promised when they stood at this altar, and became members of this congregation who promised to support the church in its prayers, in its presence, and in their finances have just dropped off the face of the earth, you would think. But really, they have not. But their financial contributions have been lost. Maybe they were sent someplace else. Maybe the mail service failed to deliver them. Maybe the easy ties could not get their information correctly. I don't know what it was, but I'm hurt to say that over 30 people on our rolls have not given anything since March of 2020. That's almost 18 months. But you know what has happened in that time? Others have stepped up to give what they could. Others have stepped up to go beyond their normal offering and given more. Others have carried the weight for those who did not support their church. My Lord, what can we say? We can't command people to give as unto the Lord. We cannot, we can preach all day about tithes belong to the Lord that bring the tithes into the storehouse and see if God will not pour you out a blessing beyond what you're able to receive. We can say all of those things, but if it's not a generous spirit in the heart, if it's not laziness, then people will not do it. Giving what you got, giving what you can, is the theme today. And Paul was talking about collecting an offering for the church at Jerusalem, a church that was being persecuted, a, per a church that had needs, a church that needed the contribution of the community to maintain its viability, to continue to support its missionary efforts, to continue its support in feeding the hungry, Paul was pleading with the church at Corinth to do this. And he was not commanding them to do it. He said, out of the generosity of your heart, in response to what God has already done for you, do this. And so I come to you today, not commanding you, just suggesting. The church has gone forth. The church has maintained its viability. The church has had windows installed. The church is, is trying to move forward in the year 2021. But some of those who started out with us a year ago, some have died. And we mourn their loss. And because they have died, we do not expect their financial support. But nevertheless, some of them left things in their will. Some of those left things with their families and say, I want to support my church like this. I want to give what I can.
to maintain the continuity of Roberts Memorial. Because we know that Roberts Memorial has to pay the light bills. We know that Roberts Memorial has to pay the water bill. We know that Roberts Memorial has to pay the gas bill. We know that Roberts Memorial has to pay the salary for Barry, the salary for pastor, paying all of the things that are normal in the operation of a church. We know those things continue to go on. But some folk have decided it has to be a decision that I don't want to support it anymore. And I wonder what's that about? I wonder if their connection to God, I'm assuming that Roberts is their connection to God. I'm assuming they also have a personal relationship with God. I'm assuming these things exist. But what is it about the lack of support of the church that they've been a part of. A church that they came to this altar and said, this is my church and I will support it with my time, with my service, with my money. I know somebody's mad with me today because I'm talking about money. I'm sorry, get over it. Why? Because as we get ready to come back to worship, there are going to be some additional expenses that we will have to pay out in order to make this facility safe for you. We will give what we have to make this place safe for your return. And I want you to be here when we return. And I want you to be able to, with a good conscience, to say, while I could, I gave my church what I could. Don't worry about what the pastor's given. Don't worry about what, what someone else is given. What can I do? What is it that I can give to make this a better place, to maintain the missionary ministries of this church? What can I give? Because God has given me so much. Think about that now. What if when you stop giving to God at his church, God has stopped giving to you? Hmm? What if God's tenderness, God's mercy, God's love had just dried up just like your offerings dried up? Hmm? No, this message is not critiquing the amount that anyone sends in. As a matter of fact, I want to commend those who have used Easy Ties. I want to commend those who drop by the church and put an envelope in the box. I want to commend those who find ways to mail their offerings in. Why? Because they feel an obligation. They feel a connection to what's happening at Roberts, and they want to support that. I feel sorry for those who choose not to. Now, Paul also said in his letter, he says, if you don't have, I'm not expecting anything from you. And so if because of pandemic, you have been destitute, you have been out of work, you've had no income, and therefore nothing will be expected from you. But if you're destitute and have no income, I would expect to have heard from you by now so that we might use the pastor's discretionary fund to assist you. That's what it's there for. Members of the community call us in asking for assistance, and we give that. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do. And we are, we are able to do that because conscientious members have put money into the pastor's discretionary fund. Sometimes they write a check. Other times they go to easy ties and designate it for that purpose. That's how a church goes forth. That's how a church maintains its mission. That's how a church stays viable. God is looking at each one of us. 
And God is not saying, Danley, you've got to match what Billy does. Danley, you've got to match what Charles does. It's not saying we have to match what Norma does or we have to match what Ava does. God is saying, what can you do for the kingdom of God at Roberts? How can you support it? What little bit you have, give that little bit. And you know what? God takes our little and makes it much according to God's plan. Brothers and sisters, giving what you have in that context is about money, okay? But it's also about your service. Think about that. During these uh, themes, beginning in June, and it will continue through August, we've been asking persons to give up themselves in doing reflections. And some folk have said, oh, no, Pastor, I can't do that. I'm afraid of that. I don't understand the technology. I don't want to be in front of the camera. And I understand that. It's something new. And people don't like to do new things. People feel intimidated by technology. I, I know I do. But at the same time, and I hate to call him out, but I, 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 want, I need to say this. Brother Troy Smith has stepped up and said, Pastor, I want to be a part of this. I'll record the scriptures for you. And, and, and I'll make it, uh, it's me giving what I have that the worship might be enriched. God bless you. He's now saying, I, I want to do a reflection. Why? Because he wants to give what he has. And others have stepped up and given their reflections. You know, Norma Turner is doing hers today. Next week, Sister Tanya Thomas is doing a reflection. After that, others will be doing it. Some who have done before. Last week, it was Jennifer Jovanovich. The week before that, it was, oh, I don't remember. But we've had Ivor Ritchie. We've had, um, hmm, who else have we had? We've had a bunch of folk. I can't think of all the names now, but the point of, I'm making is that people have stepped up. Rene Ellen has done it. People have stepped up. Octavia Young has done it. People have stepped up. Le uh, uh, Lorna Eaton has done it. People have stepped up to say, I want to be a part of the service and, and, and record me in. Members of the choir are now recording themselves at home and giving what they have. They, they are, we've got uh, Charles Lawrence and we've got, uh, uh, got Charles, other members of the choir. Uh, Bob has done it. Um, Karen Colbert has done it. Um, um, her cousin has done it. Even Vicki Taylor Bass and, and Donna have, have, have given what they have as a part of the welcome song. So you see where I'm saying, what I'm going? Not just the people you would expect, but others have said, I want to be a part of this. Others have said, I can do this. I, I might be a little intimidated by it, but I'll do it. Anne McCamey has done it. Jill has done it. Why? Because they see that I want to give something back to my church. I want to be a part of the worship experience. I, I want to be in front of the camera so that Roberts in general can see that there's participation beyond Barry and beyond Chelsea and beyond Kim and beyond the pastor, that this is a community that is coming together, that is trying to provide a, a rich and vibrant worship experience for you that involves many people not as many people as if we could come together here in person. We can't do that just yet. But while we're in this, while we're in this, 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 this moment of hesitation, while we have not come back to in-person worship yet, persons have stepped up and said, Pastor, I can help 
Why am I asking for that type of help? Because I want the congregation to see other faces. I want them to be reminded that there are others in this universe who are praying with robbers, who are working with robbers, who are giving thanks to God for the opportunity to be here, giving what they can. Are you feeling me today? Are you feeling me? Are you feeling guilty? Don't. This is not a guilt trip. This is a, a new opportunity for you. Today, if what I've said pricked your heart and you realize that you're part of that, 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 that crowd that have not given anything since last March, then start right now. If you're part of those folks that we reached out to and asked to be a part of our recorded worship services, and you said, I don't know, rethink that with an attitude that if God gives me strength, I will try. You see, that's all we're asking, that you try. Because if you try, God will bless it. If you try, God will give you the increase. If you try, God will make it happen. And we have a wonderful editorial staff of one. Sister Kim is up late on Saturdays every week, it seems like, editing that which comes in so that when you see the worship on Sunday morning, we're giving what we have back to Roberts. And it looks good. Somebody said, I thought y'all was live every Sunday. And we're not. The only times we're live on Sundays is for communion, which we will have today. But we have a team of people who are giving what they have so that the worship experience that you see from your homes is in enveloping, is engrossing, it is worshipful, and it includes members of Roberts to enhance that, to remind you of the, some of the people that you don't see because we're not able to come back together. And we celebrate that because these are people who come forth to give what they have. And no, they're not rock stars. And no, sometimes... Sometimes you, you would say, I, I wish somebody else had done that. But you know what? I'm pleased with the effort. I'm pleased that Sister Harriet and Sister B will come out here on a Thursday afternoon and record with me and Kim as we try to give a choir effect. I'm pleased. No, they don't sound like Whitney Houston or 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 or. or, or any other star, but they're singing from their heart. They're singing because of what God has given them. They're singing because they believe it. They're giving what they have that the worship experience might be enhanced. And anybody who negates that, I say you're in the wrong place. Because those ladies, as, as, as senior as they are, Get up and try. And some of you, half their age, refuse to even try. Shame on you. Shame on you. I mean, I see Crystal just singing her hearts out at home on a video so that she can demonstrate that she's giving her joy. She's giving her all. She means what she's saying when she sends those recordings in. And you can see it in her face. You can see the confidence growing in Sister Karen as she sings from home. You can see the joy even in Charles's face as he begins to, 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 to participate in worship from home. Giving what they have, not what they don't have. Charles doesn't think he's Luther. 
He knows who he is and he does the best that he can with what he has. And some of you won't even try. Shame on you. What if God, huh? What if God responded to us the way we respond to his church? Huh? What would life be like? Hmm? Would you feel cheated? Would you feel left out? Would you feel that God is not as close to you as God used to be? W would you feel that? Well, how do you think I feel as I open the mail each week and I don't see your name? Or as the manager I receive reports and I don't see your names. Hmm? Are you giving what you have to the glory of God? Because if you're not, why not? Huh? Why not? You know that man from Galilee, the one that we call Jesus, he came and he walked this earth, this dusty earth. And he cast out demons. He opened the eyes of the blind. He opened the ears of the deaf. He raised folk from the dead. Why? Because he wanted to demonstrate what the love of God looks like. But he wasn't finished there. You know why? Because the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That was Jesus. And they arrested him on a Thursday night. They had a mock trial on a Friday morning. They beat him. They spat upon him. They scourged him. And then they led him out to Golgotha's Hill. And there they crucified him. For you and for me. They thought they had gotten rid of a troublemaker. They thought that they had put an X in the plan of God. But the Bible tells us that early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And he got up for you and for me. And he told Peter that I'm going to build my church on you. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But this is one of the churches of Jesus Christ. This is one of the places where we celebrate what he has done for the world. This is one of the places where we recognize and commend the work of the Holy Spirit. This is one of the places where we come and not only pray and worship, but we offer our best to God. Why? Because God gave his best for us. Think about that. Pray about that. And then decide to give what you have. Give it monetarily. Give it in mission. Give it in participatory services. Why? Because God has enabled you to do so. Yes, he has. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Is my prayer. Now, those of you who have listened today realize that a lot of this message was for members of Roberts. 
But if you're listening today, this message is for you also. The theme for this week as we conclude our services on When the Spirit Moves is giving what you have. God has blessed us to be a blessing to someone else. God gives us gifts for the benefit of others. God gave us this opportunity to worship for everyone who wanted to chime in. And so, as an invitation to Christian discipleship, if you do not have a church home, you can join us electronically and be a part of the ministry here at Roberts. Or you can join a church wherever you live. Some of them are going back to in-person worship. We're not ready to do that yet. But if you are in an area where there's a church that's open and they preach the Bible and they teach the Bible, stop by and see what they have to offer. Because if they're doing those things, the Spirit of Christ is there. And this is your day to celebrate what God has done for you by saying yes to the yes that God has already said. If you're listening, this message is for you. Harden not your hearts as they did in the day of salvation. But today is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice in it. Amen. Amen. I thank you for joining in worship with us today. I thank those who participated in worship with us, who gave what they have. And so until next week, actually, we'll be back at 1234 Communion this afternoon. Unfortunately, it can only be on Zoom because Communion is a community affair of believers. And we cannot put that on Facebook or YouTube. It must be in-house, done together. All right? So unto him who's able to keep us and to present us before the throne of grace, to the only wise God, our Father, who reigns in union with the Son and the Holy Spirit, be glory and majesty forever and ever.